I'm here today to talk about um, really our journey. My name is Louis Newcomb. I'm an executive director of engineering and storage. So my teams are responsible for all the software-defined storage uh, products we do. I'm also responsible for all the, uh, the disk technologies and one of the most exciting ones being SSDs, but uh, we'll leave the SSDs for another, another topic. Um, what I'd like to do today, if it's okay with you, is, is really talk about our journey and <clears throat> how we got to SDS. Um, and you know, how you, the, the steps taken, what was going on in the marketplace. Really a few things that are my point of view around SDS. And then I want to talk about um, how we found Nutanix, which is, gonna, is where we're going to end the conversation today. Uh, but before I, right before I get to that, I um, really like to talk about lessons learned. So one of the things that we've done is we've got several software-defined storage partners. And we've, uh, we've learned a lot about doing products. And a lot of this learning isn't widely known. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, I think it's important to hear. So, if it's okay with you, that's the that's where I'll go. Okay, all right. Well, let me let me start by saying this. Uh, about seven years ago, uh, Dell set on a journey to convert really from a, a partnered uh, storage company to an IP company, and we started many acquisitions. Most of them you may have read about or wrote about. Um, but as we went through that journey, acquired companies, and started building our own IP, um, we got to a point where we acquired so many companies, we had to integrate them. And uh, if you've ever been on this side of the table, integration's tough. So, but as we integrated, you know, things were still happening in the marketplace. Uh, technologies were still being developed, and markets were still shifting. And we, we have a venture group that essentially goes out and tracks the industry, and we make uh, strategic investments. Some are public, some are not public. Uh, but through that, that window, we were starting to see things happen around software-defined. Software-defined networking, software-defined storage, and these weren't the companies we acquired, but these were technologies. At the same time, uh, you know, the things that were happening at Google and Amazon and Microsoft, you know, Facebook, or something we mentioned earlier, uh, the, these, these hyperscale tenants were starting to move into the enterprise. We started seeing them show up, really in our server <coughs> business, our enterprise business, uh, you know, larger scaled out architectures, um, you know, three-tiered architectures, et cetera. Uh, so we got, we had this, you know, so we were focused on building our IP, but, but certainly something else was happening. So we, we made a decision at that point to go out and partner uh, and find best of breed in SDS. And, uh, but, but before I get into the partners, I want to talk about SDS, because SDS, we first started talking about, that word was a little bit like cloud. You know, nobody, well, 10 people could describe it, and you get 10 different descriptions of what SDS was. So I'm going to put in some things in categories just to kind of help the conversation. So SDS, you know, for, for me, there, there's, there's, different, there's different types. There's a, there's a so, let's call it uh, open source, pure software SDS. You know, Ceph might be in this example. Certainly a market out there, customers are, are working on Ceph. Um, then there's appliance model, and the appliance model is essentially just an abstraction of the uh, software from the hardware and running, running the software you know, on standard servers. And then there's hyperscale, or not hyperscale, hyperconverge, some call it shared nothing, where the this compute and the storage are all one piece and then clustered together. And, and that's, that's what Nutanix is, we're gonna talk in detail about that one. So as, as we went out and started looking at uh, best in breed, um, you know, we decided to pick one of each category. So we've got about five different software-defined partners. But uh, what, we, what we recognize, though, is from a customer um, adoption and customer interest, hyperconverge become the kind of the hot product. And, uh, and we'll go, some of you know about this, but essentially it, it delivered the, uh, really the, the cost structure that the uh, customers were looking for. Um, it also delivered the, um, the converge, you brought your networking and your storage and your uh, virtual machines all in the same package, the same management, and uh, you know, really, really helped us out with uh, deployment, ease of use of management, stuff like that we'll get into. But um, you know, so I'm gonna swerve into Nutanix now. So uh, we, <laughs> you know, I've been doing this three years, and the first few companies that I dealt with, um, there are really a lot of really smart software people, you know, and, but they didn't understand storage. And what I mean by that is, if you've been in storage long enough, you know things um, don't work as expected, and you, you really need your software to handle these kinds of issues. Uh, and, uh, and operationally, when we moved off of purpose-built hardware into x86 servers, the x86 server is just a different animal. 
So the traditional sands that have these uh, purpose-built hardware machines in them go through a completely different process to design, develop, and test. X86 servers are designed and tested for a general purpose market. Many OSs, many interfaces, many disk drives, et cetera. In storage, um, you know, we, we kind of rely very much on the storage stack in the server. So the, the, the controller, the interface, and the di disk drives. And we kind of expect a certain behavior in there. And so what happened was when we started seeing companies go out and be software only, they ran into trouble. They ran into trouble with uh, some call it certification, some call it test. Uh, some call it interoperability, but they ran into trouble because it just didn't work as expected. And when I say work, I don't mean the data path didn't work. I mean the data path performed differently with different workloads. The, the data path, when it had to go deal with an interrupt like a failed disk drive, didn't work as expected. Some disk drives failed, uh, you know, have failed failure mechanisms that are very intermittent. It didn't work very well. So what we found is kind of the best of classes when you put together the uh, the software with the hardware and put it through a certification process uh, results in the best product. And we've got lots of examples of that. Um, now I'm going to give you a few, but before we do, let me talk about <laughs> Nutanix now. So we, we, we met Nutanix, um, actually Joanne, who's going to talk next, and I went out on our first engineering meeting after we, um, we decided to do uh, a contract with them. Um, and we were, we'd already dealt with a few companies and dealt with a uh, situation where we were teaching storage to software developers. It's not a bad thing, but it's, it's, you're kind of starting with, you know, zero and working your way up. And I kind of expected this, not knowing much about Nutanix. I saw their YouTubes, I saw their marketing, I saw yeah, everything they had out there, but you know, you, you've got to go really understand it before you can trust it. So we, we visited Nutanix, um, uh, I want to say Santa Clara, that's where we were at. And uh, we were pleasantly surprised. We actually met storage people. We met people that knew software, uh, storage software. We met people that knew disk drives. We met people that understand uh, what was needed to build a robust product. And uh, we started a wonderful relationship. So that, that very day, we spent, or those two days, we actually planned out our first products. And uh, um, that relationship has blossomed since. We've, we, in earnest, started selling the product, uh, which we call the Dell XC. I think there's a picture behind me, yeah. We started selling that product in about March of last year. Um, and we've, we've had just phenomenal success. We've beat every plan we put in place. Uh, we have hundreds of customers at Dell on XE. We've sold thousands and thousands of nodes. Uh, I've been doing this for a while in my career. I've been part of startups. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, the relationship uh, you know, from the engineering side, to the planning side, to the go-to-market side, you know, it's just been... Um, you know, one plus one equals three, if I can say that. Um, you know, it's not been perfect. We've, we've had to work together on some stuff, but it's been probably one of the most successful products I've dealt with, and certainly uh, the exception by our customers has been just phenomenal. So great, great win for Nutanix, great win for Dell. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, I want to give you some details of, of lessons learned, because, um, and then Joanne's going to come up and talk about Nutanix. I may, I may not... Uh, some of you may not want to hear this, <laughs> but I've, I've, uh, I've watched this market for a long time and been in it for a long time. And uh, when hyperscale started, um, in these buildings around Dell, we were hearing words like hardware failures don't matter, you know, client technologies are good enough, do it yourself is just fine, um, all flash drives are equal, and uh, you know, in, in just general, it just it it changes the behavior and where you how you develop and ship a product. I didn't feel like <laughs> I didn't believe in any of that. By the way, <coughs> from my experience, I was part of uh, very early HPC products, were highly distributed systems, and I knew what hardware failures could do to to a software stack. And so, you know, the the traditional storage guys, and that's and I'm in that camp too. But you know, we've we'd spend just enormous amount of time designing, developing, testing. You know. Uh, purpose-built equipment to make sure it works. The hyperscale side, you know, there's not a lot of time developing the solution from a hardware platform. There's a lot of time spent on the software, which is where all the value add is. So we've got <coughs> a dilemma. We've got uh, hardware platforms that are um, really thought to be uh, disposable and, and fares don't matter. And we've got, uh, on the other side, kind of very expensive purpose-built hardware that uh, um, is being challenged by this new inflection point called SDS. 
So the good news is our teams have learned how to solve this. So we, we can today go and take about any software package out there and work with a company and make sure we get the same experience in a software-defined offering as we do uh, a traditional storage offering. The way we do that, number one is team. So Joanne uh, has been doing software appliances on x86 servers uh, for the last seven or eight years. So she's going to come up and talk about that. And, and we're going to talk about how we do that. Um, so having storage professionals in the development cycle that understand everything from the design to the deployment to the serviceability, uh, it, it was necessary to do it right. And frack, Nutanix did this without us, to be frank. We just accelerated it. Um, and so we, we've got the team. No, number two is, is really the, um, uh, the technology. I mean, a lot of the software that we see, um, yeah, I'll give you an example. I won't name a company, but a, soft, a piece of software was built, Software Find, very large company. You all know their name. <laughs> and they, they didn't understand cache inside of a SATA disk. And, uh, and so they, they had no provision in their software to shut off that cache and protect the customers from losing data up from that cache. Uh, so they went out to the hardware industry and said, you can't put cache in a SATA disk. Well, the reality is that SATA disk has sold them a bunch of markets that don't care about losing data, that cache, and they get a performance boost. <coughs> so it's really hard to shift the hard drive industry uh, one way. What you've got to do is have the intelligence and the software. Most of them do that right. But that's just one example. Um, so, anyways, so team, understand the design. Uh, you know, the other big piece is uh, x86 servers, you know, like we see here, these beautiful vertex boxes somebody loves, Tom loves, uh, and, and our 630 server. You know, th these things, um, you know, they don't have built into them all the serviceability that a SAN would have or a, or a NAS box would have. And, and what I mean by that is in the firmware, in the software of a SAN or a NAS product by any vendor of your choice, there's a lot of intelligence built in there to help triage, <coughs> excuse me, triage and troubleshoot issues on a service event. The, these boxes have some level of that, but not all of that. So we have to add that to these things. And in fact, it's one of the, I think one of the biggest challenges of SDS, uh, besides just customer adoption, is you know, turning a x86 server storage stack and delivering the same performance, the same quality of service, and the same serviceability as a SAN is today. And, and we're on that journey with the industry. We're meeting with um, many of the ecosystem guys. You, you know, I'll, I'll use the name LSI. Some of you may know they're now Broadcom. <laughs> but LSI is a key component here. LSI is uh, kind of the de facto standard HBA inside of all servers today. There, there's other vendors, but they, they've kind of lead the market. So we're working with Avago, excuse me, <laughs> LSI. They've, they've changed names three times in a year. Uh, but we're working with them. They're, they're having the same problems we're having. They're seeing software-defined uh, stacks come out and break their controllers. and uh, I'll give you another example. We worked with a very large OS company, um, and their management tool, their management framework, uh, when it had SATA disk in a virtual environment, was shooting non-queued commands down into the storage controller. And the non-queued commands starved the, the storage controller <coughs> and stopped the I.O. We had to fix that. We had to go back to that, very, uh, that OS company and convince them that that was a very bad practice to send non bursting non-queued commands into storage controllers. 